Hi, Zach Soche from Greensock here. In this video, I'll teach you how to make your animations more dynamic and interesting with GSAP's stagger features, including some advanced techniques. As you may know, GSAP makes it easy to animate a whole bunch of elements using a single tween. In this demo, we have an intersection observer that will fade in elements when they are visible in the browser's viewport. So inside of our intersection observer function, we first get an array of targets of the newly visible elements, and then we animate those elements opacity using GSAP. So in the demo, if we scroll down, you can see that new elements are faded in, all grouped at the same time. However, animating multiple elements like this at the same time can feel flat. How can we add some offsets so that each element fades in one by one? We could use multiple tweens and manually set their offset, but it's much easier with GSAP staggers. So here, we can just say stagger and then give it a value, like 0.2. So now when we run it, we can see that in our demo, the elements will fade in one by one, and if we scroll down, they'll again fade in one by one. This small difference can really help your animations feel less mechanical and more lifelike. Let's look really quickly at another example where staggers can help your animations look more lively. Here we have some buttons in a navigation type of layout that animate in and out using some eases. So you can see here it animating out and back in. But even with this elastic ease, it seems kind of stale. But watch what happens when a slight stagger is added to both animations. Now when I run it, much better, right? Thus far, we've only used simple staggers, but GSAP gives you even more control over how your animations are staggered. For more complex staggers, we can make use of a stagger object. So in this animation, we can see that each box is being animated down 100 pixels from its original position, starting 0.1 seconds after the previous animation starts. If we wanted to write the same thing using a stagger object, we could just create some brackets and then say each and pass the value that we had before. So now if we run it, you can see that the exact same animation occurs. But now that we're using the stagger object, we can now add new properties to change how the stagger works. For example, in this stagger, it starts from an index of zero or very leftmost box. But what if we wanted to start at a different one instead, like say this blue box? Well, this is at the third index, so we could say from and then pass in a number like three. So when you run it, we can see that it will start from the blue one and go out to both edges from there. We could also use keywords such as center, which starts the stagger from the centermost object and goes outwards from there. Or we could use end, which goes from the very far end of the objects and goes backwards. Or we could use edges, which goes from the start and end at the same time towards the center. There's also one more keyword that was just added called random, which will stagger the boxes in a random order. Here we have a 2D grid of elements that fades out and in in a random order when we click on the page. You can see that the code makes use of GSAP's handy two array and shuffle utility methods. The tween just animates the box between an auto alpha of 0 and 1 depending on the click count and uses staggers to offset each animation. What's not optimal about this is this ugly looking number of 0 0.006 in the each property. Again, this number determines how long it should wait before starting the next stagger animation. But instead of using each here, we could use a different property called amount. So here if we put amount, then we can use a, a bigger number like 0.5. This will take the number and divide it by the number of elements that are being staggered to create the offset duration. Now when I run it, you can see that it's about the same effect, but a much cleaner number. In two dimensions, we can do even more with GSAP staggers. Here we have a tween that scales our boxes down to 0.1 and then back for an infinite amount of times. And we're applying a stagger of 0.1 and starting from the center. So now when we run it, you can see that the stagger will start from the center and go towards the outside, but it's still in one dimensions, not two dimensions. How do we get it working in two dimensions? You guessed it, GSAP has a property for that too. We can say grid and then pass in the number of rows followed by the number of columns. Now when we run it, we can see that the staggers will apply in a 2D fashion. Cool, right? Even better, we can use a keyword. So here we can say grid auto and it will detect the grid as long as our grid is made of DOM elements. With two-dimensional staggers, we can also use another keyword, and that keyword is the axis. So if we have an axis and we set it to Y or X, then it will restrict the staggers to animating into just that axis. 
So it'll still animate in two dimensions, but just apply it to one of the axes. So this is applying it to Y. If we change it to X, then we can see that behavior is very different and applies to the columns instead. By default, it's X comma Y, which animates in both X and Y directions. Some properties can be used in both the var's parameter outside the stagger object and inside the stagger object. They'll have different effects based on where they are placed. For example, if we have repeat negative 1 and yo-yo true outside of a stagger object, each tween will wait for the other staggered tweens to start before repeating like we see here. But if we instead put the repeat and yo-yo inside of the stagger object, then each tween will not wait for the other tweens to start before repeating. So it'll be like this, where each tween repeats immediately. This is because everything inside the stagger object affects how the animations are staggered, while everything outside the stagger object affects the animation itself. The same thing is true for callback functions. If you put an onRepeat callback function, or any other callback function, outside of the stagger object, then it will fire only once for all of the elements being targeted. If you include the callback function inside the stagger object, it will fire once per each target. Another feature I want to show is applying an ease to the stagger distribution. Both of these lines of boxes have the same animation applied. However, the first line of boxes uses a default stagger ease of none, which distributes the stagger evenly. The second line of boxes uses a stagger ease of power 3.out, which starts slow and ends faster. Notice how that affects the animation distribution. Keep in mind that this is different than an ease applied outside of a stagger object. Eases outside of a stagger object are applied to the animation itself, while eases applied inside of the stagger apply to the distribution of the animations, or the stagger itself. To learn more about using GSEP, check out greensock.com learning. If you're having trouble with your project, you can post in our forums at greensock.com forums.